The last vulnerability is a server-side request forgery. Is the last vulnerability of a Wasp Top 10 from 2021, which is also a module inside a complete beginner path on TryHackMe. So we have task number 22, server-side request forgery or SS. RF for sure. Server side request forgery. This type of vulnerability occurs when an attacker can coerce a web application. This type of vulnerability occurs when an attacker can coerce a web application into sending requests on their behalf to arbitrary destinations while having control of the contents of the request itself. SSRF vulnerabilities often arise from implementations where our web application needs to use third-party services. Think, for example, of a web application that uses an external API to send SMS notifications to its clients. For each email, the website needs to make a web request to the SMS provider's server to send the content of the message to be sent. Since the SMS provider charges per message, they require you to add a secret key, which they pre-assign to you, to each request you make to their API. The API key serves as an authentication token and allows the provider to know to whom to bill each message. The application will work like this. So we have this application to the SMS endpoint and here we have the query. So from the server, here we have that uh, requirement, right? Here we have that added secret key and the message. Right here we have that one, which is sending the SMS with the text hello. This is the request, right? We have a get request from this endpoint, which looks, it looks like exactly like this. That one goes to a server, my site, where my site.com is. Here is the query, right? We see that here actually when it's on the my site server it builds the query with this request and goes to the api and then sends the message that we basically sent and forwards that with key inside our server 3 sms try hack me we have the message with the secret key by looking at the diagram above, it is easy to see where the vulnerability lies. The application exposes the server parameter to the users, which defines the server name of the SMS service provider. If the attacker wanted, they could simply change the value of the server to point to a machine they control. And your application and your web application would happily forward the SMS request to the attacker instead of the SMS provider. As part of the forwarded message, the attacker would obtain the API key, allowing them to use the SMS service to send messages at your expense. To achieve this, the attacker would only need to make the following request at your website. And here we see the same request but instead of using the server, this one, we just pasted our one and a message. This would make the vulnerable web application make a request to our attacker. Try hack me API send message ABC. You could then just capture the contents of the request using netcat. We opened a listener on port 80 to listen for the request that anyone will make when they access this website. This is a really basic case of SSRF. If this doesn't look that scary, SSRF can actually be used to do much more. In general, depending on the specifics of each scenario, SSRF can be used for Enumerate internal networks, including IP addresses and ports, abuse trust relationships between servers and gain access to otherwise restricted services, interact with some non-HTTP services to get remote code execution. Let's quickly look at how we can use SSRF to abuse some trust relationships. We have a practical example. Navigate to our vulnerable location where you'll find a simple web application. After exploring a bit, you should see an admin area, which will be our main objective. Follow the instructions on the 
following questions to gain access to the website restricted area. Okay, so we have here John Wu, which is a cat photographer and a web designer. We can also download its resume and we have the portfolio we have about, all right? Contact me. Admin area, okay. We go over here, admin is available from a local host. Okay, answer the questions below. Explore the website. What is the only host allowed to its local host? Check the downloaders button. Where does the server parameter go to? Okay, we go back here. And let's see. As you can see, securefilestorage.com. Using us as our app, make the application send requests to your attack box instead. Are there any API in the are there any API keys in the intercepted request? All right, we open the terminal. Here we say if config another, we open another terminal and we say netcat and all vp listen on port 8888. Okay, so here on port 8888, we have uh, DNS lookup, listen, verbose mode on port 8888. We started that listener, we go back in burp. And here we go back in our console. We go here where we use the command if config to watch our IP, machine's IP. You can also see it, the attack box IP over here, or you can check ends5. We copy this. We go back in burp suit. We use it over here and here at the port. We say eight 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 eight. And now let's check our let's check our listener. And here you can see that we are we have received the request that we sent. We have a connection from that server, right? We have requested the PDF, the document, the resume. This is our host and port that we are listened to. And here are just user agent information. And here we have the API key, which is actually the flag that we are looking for over here. All right, going the extra mile, there is a way to use SSRF to gain access to the site's admin area. Can you find it? Note, you won't need this flag to progress in the room. You are expected to do some research in order to achieve your goal. First, I tried from Exploit Database two scripts of WorkZug. And uh, this was the last one that I've tried from with the ID 43905 from Ali. I've tried this, but it did not work. I think you have to make it uh, um, syntax. This is, I think, syntax for Python 2. So this one, it did not work. But I also tried the, the work Zug from Metasploit, but you have to, the vulnerable application is to use a work Zug console, which is a version lower than 0 0.10. This one is not 0 0.10. This one is this one is actually 0 0.16.1. Okay, that did not work. But if we go to the website and we check out this one, it's exactly the vulnerability that we that we played with to find this flag, right? You we see that the server we have a input where we can place our payload. So where we see our server for that, we actually input. This is the crafted URL that we need to do, that we need to use in order to get to the admin flag. So basically we have the same request for that, where the server has that flaw and we use the local host on the same port by the admin endpoint. If we check again this one and we say here admin, 
we can see that admin interface is only available for local host at the following endpoint. Okay, cool. Then we use for the host local host at the following port for the admin endpoint. And we use the same ID. It's pretty simple. Ah, that was it. <laughs>